Every time I just go deeper in the dark side, I've been the most creativity person in the world. I've been so creative. I just paint a lot. Like all my pain was in that books or in that painting or in that like songs I was singing. Most artists would agree that a lot of the best art does come from pain, but it can also come from joy. Of course, yes, but right? what's the but? Thank you for joining me on the Creative Path Podcast. Yeah, here we are. Like, Thank you, you look for at camera, me. you're just such a natural. You're such a natural. <laughs> Thank My you goodness. for having me. Um, Augustina Palma, uh, we met at Mind Valley University yes. last year. Yes. And um, we won't go into that story, but we just just hit it off. You're amazing. I really appreciate the fact that you're coming on this podcast because a lot of people have no idea that you've barely learned English. Yes, one year ago. One year. One year ago. I mean, I was doing a lot of <laughs> workshops in English all my life, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work. And only in my valley, I just said, okay, I need to talk. I need to know people. I need to introduce myself. I need to go for it. And I started to speak English one year ago. That's amazing because your English is great. It's better than my Spanish. And I spoke <laughs> Spanish for years in high school and I've been to Mexico a bunch and Costa Rica. And, yeah. and so... Um, you are a very well-known actress in in the Spanish market, and you were on a show called Bia, which is yeah. is um, a pretty big hit. And so, can you give us just a little bit of background for those people who are not familiar with you? Just a little bit, because you've been acting since you were eight. Yeah, so yeah. I've been working since I've been like eight years old. My first thing was um, with Disney. And then I, I've been doing like eight years with Disney, Once, Bia. I've been working a lot like dancing and singing and everything. And then I've been in Netflix in Argentina and then uh, COVID happened and I just left my country and I go uh, to Miami. Yes. Yes, which is also really like the South America of the United States. It, <laughs> it is, like if you want I mean, to transition, Miami, go to Miami. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes, they, I, more people speak Spanish than, than English. There are a lot of Latin American people in Miami, which mm -hmm. is so good for my family because they don't speak English. So my all my family is in Miami. And then I moved to Madrid three years and a half ago. And I've been working in Madrid, uh, doing different characters in Spanish, but Spanish from Madrid, which is like different. Um, and now I'm up to LA just mm -hmm. to be able to dream. And maybe all my life I was just trying to speak English and work in English. And, you know, Hollywood, it's the dream, the big dream for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like everyone who is like an actor, the big dream is Hollywood and I'm here. I'm trying. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. It's like a goal. Well, I congratulations on making that leap. And I, <laughs> I would love to. So a lot of a lot of people may not realize I was an actor in Los Angeles, nowhere near the level of success that you had, um, but uh, fell in love with acting as sort of my first art form, my first craft and really worked hard at it to become a, a good actor. And um, you've hit a level of success in your acting career that most people dream of. I mean, mm -hmm. you're flying all over the world, you're doing photo shoots and you're getting, if you follow your Instagram, you're basically, you're just like living what most people would say is a dream success life. And you just spoke to having these big dreams that have brought yeah. you out to Hollywood. And so for the aspiring artists out there that are listening to this, whether they're musicians or actors or whatever, um, tell me your relationship to success <laughs> and your relationship to you've been doing it from such a young age yeah. and i'm just curious how you relate to i it. think success is just personal like you can have an image for what it's success for you and what is success for me is just be happy in like the places wherever i go like it's not only just my home it's just travel around the world and feel that happiness just found that trip and that path to just Go for happiness. And I think uh, to be an actor, it's very 
it's a love. It's how you say like it's a big love because sometimes you have a bad moment. You have like I've been for five years without working, just working with my social medias and then doing some stage stuff. Like you know, being an actor is just all time being creative. Creativity? How do you say that? Creative. <laughs> Creative. Creativity. Um, not just uh, waiting for your opportunities. Just mm -hmm. go for it and just dream more bigger and just have more, um, yeah, opportunities about yourself. I don't know. That's my my success, I think. Just never be in my comfort zone. Just move and just feel I have something more to prove myself. And... It And so you haven't actually been really acting on anything for the last five years. Is that what you said? No, I say like, for example, I've been working since I, I had like eight. Yeah. So probably then I've been doing like a TV show with Disney for two years. But then I've been in the school and then I do like another TV show with Disney. And then I've been like, I, I was studying like architecture. Mm -hmm. So for four years and in the same time, like mixing that with my career with like an actor. So Being an actor for me, like it's so hard to stay, like because the people just got bored, like mm -hmm. the people just, um, it's not preparing for the no, the no, like you have a lot of no in your life, like it's not easy. There's a lot of rejection. Yeah, you experience a rejection. lot of rejection. It's that rejection. <laughs> rejection. So tell me, has have you? gotten better at rejection in other areas because of acting so do you take no well do you like get rejected in yes. your yes i never take a no like a final answer <laughs> no okay no. got it that's your relationship don't take yes, no. yes that's my relationship and i think that it's for that like i move to my goals very quickly because for example uh the last even happened in Cannes you know, the festival, the film festival of Cannes. And they told me like, no, maybe you cannot go. Like I goes, I was working with my manager a lot. Like, okay, I'm going to go like next year. I, I need to go. I, it's my dream. Mm -hmm. So they told me, mm, maybe it's difficult. Maybe pa, pa, pa. And I said like, no, it's not difficult. We're going to be like there. And I'm trying to just uh, do emails, just speak with people, just go for another manager and mix the manager and just move, move, move. And I've been in Cannes. So I think the no for me, it's just a motivation to go for it. Mm. Maybe you have a no um, is for one reason and it's okay, but I need to do everything to that happen. And if not, it's like for something. So this is really interesting because... I, I run a program called the artistic entrepreneur. And so it's about merging the inner artist and the inner entrepreneur inside of ourselves. And there's these times where we run up against walls and we hit what seem like dead ends, mm -hmm. both in business or in our artists careers. And you're speaking to how you just don't take no for an answer. And when do you know it's time to, adjust when do you know you're going down the wrong road for you instead of just pushing through and, and pushing through how do you know have you hit those moments where you go this is not the right project or i need to take a break from this or i've been working so hard for this thing for so long and it's not actually right for me do you do you have those moments i think i've been working a lot in my spiritual side and it's for that i've been so patient with the timing like the god timing Because in my life, that was like that all the time. Like, uh, how you say the... Ups and downs? Yeah, like, yeah but the Montaña Rusa. Roller, roller coaster. Roller coaster, yeah. yeah. And is that like, not only my life, like an actress, my profession is my life. Mm. And life is that for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I work a lot in my intuition on how, how to feel like, okay, this is not going to happen because I have another thing better. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to do like my meditations my things and I think when I'm quiet I can just listen myself and say like okay this is not gonna happen because I'm gonna receive another thing better and have you always been like that have, when when did the spiritual listening you're tapping into your intuition meditation how long have you been in that I think I've been working a lot in like all my life since I 20 
Okay. Because I had 20. But then in my life, um, in the COVID, it happened something like very strong for me. And that was like my new beginning, my new life, mm -hmm. like my new just changing my life. Um, that was the death of my ex-boyfriend. So for me in the COVID, that was like, okay, I'm just living alone for the first time. That happened. That was very strong. I, and I have the opportunity to just take all my tools. Like I've been doing like yoga, meditation, working with coaching. It's like, and that was my new beginning to the spiritual side. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that because that was my, my mind was open. My heart was open. Like everything changed for me. Mm. And I create my new reality. Like my life before COVID, it's one. And my life after COVID, it's like another one. There's so many people who, who would say the same thing. That COVID just changed everything. And so you had um, your ex-boyfriend actually pass away. And so when that happened, um, I'm curious from an art standpoint, yeah. Going back to the creativity and the creative path. Did I it was the most creative. How do you say that? Creativity. You did most creative? Yes. Yeah. I've been like like doing my journal journaling all days. I've been working in my series, like in my book, in my things. Like every time I just go deeper in the dark side, mm. I've been the most creativity person in the world. So this is so, this is such an interest <laughs> this is an interesting thing for me because I think as artists for myself um I have for a lot of my life believed that a lot of the best art comes from pain. And most artists would agree that a lot of the best art does come from pain, but it can also come from joy. Of course, yes, but right? but But what's the but? All right, family, I wanted to take a moment and remind you that if you are interested in the Artistic Entrepreneur Incubator, I encourage you to check the link in the description of this video because we are filling it up. If you are someone who has the heart of an artist and the mind of an entrepreneur, and you have a knowing that you could be great, you just need the community, the mentorship, the structure, the invitation into a space for you to actualize your greatness. If that is you, then right now, click the link and make sure that you take the journey with us. I write the best poem in my life, like the best book in my life. I've been so creative. I just paint a lot. Like all my pain was in that books or in that painting or in that like songs. I was singing for a long time. I, uh, for a long time, I didn't sing. And that time was like my best time for singing and express myself and just take off my voice and just even just talk with people more mm -hmm. because for me that was a change like I was so antisocial and then after that I was like okay I need to I need to tell the people how they can change their lives mm -hmm. I can need to connect more with people so I need to just share my message and receive new message like I need people mm -hmm. so that was my and the people give me more creativity because the people give me like the essence the, the heart like the communication the conversations and then I went to my house and said okay maybe Okay, I can write about that. I can write about that. Like the people give me the the good creativity side, I think. And I 100% agree. What I say to people when they say I don't know, I have writer's block or I feel, I'm not inspired or I don't feel creative, I think creative energy is contagious. And so if you want to get inspired, go be around people who inspire you. Yeah. Go go even just go to a movie or go listen to different music you haven't listened to before. Go is to a that? museum. That's that will bring inspiration. It's not like the pain. It's gonna give you the creativity. I think the, how you say like go deeper. Mm -hmm. I can notice like I was traveling around the world about like my work, and I can notice how different countries they have different connections, and for me, United States. I don't know if you're gonna tell me that, but it's like USA, USA. USA. <laughs> I don't know that, but here I think the connections and the relationships, like they don't want to go deeper, you know, like we, like in Latin America, we have a five hours conversation, mm -hmm. like we go deeper to the pain, to the happiest, to the everything. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, here it's so hard to connect with someone and go just deeper for five hours, six hours, just talk about life. Everything mm -hmm. is just quickly here, mm -hmm. I think.
I don't know. Well, I think that, that that's a really interesting point and why I have always loved Latin culture um, so much because I think I have that desire for just depth and passion that I find in the Latin culture. Um, but what I will say is there's a lot of Latin um, countries, for example, that are, are underdeveloped if, mm -hmm. in relation to the U.S. And a lot of that actually has to do with some of those cultural things. There's, there's places in Europe that are like this too, yeah. that are just underdeveloped because the country as a culture operates different, differently. Mm. Like Spain, right? The siestas and the super long dinners <laughs> and the different things. It's just not the same work ethic that America is sort of known for. And that work ethic that you see in places like wh what other cultures are known for that Asian cultures, mm -hmm. right? And so you see Japan and China and the US and these countries that are really at the forefront of development. And I think that's such an interesting thing because it's almost masculine feminine, right? It's but very- it, Yes, it's because like, I think here it's more masculine energy. They are all the time like working and it's mm -hmm. very fast. Everything is fast. So they don't have time to connect even with themselves you know it's mm -hmm. like go deeper and like just to try to understand what happened with the other person just communicate have ideas just mix that and it's so difficult that people just find a good place to creativity but you seem so busy you t w <laughs> from the outside looking in maybe it's your social media team that's making <laughs> it look you're just at home painting and they just make it look like you're traveling but it seems as if you're traveling all the time you're doing photo shoots and press all the time and all of this so do you feel that you are, that you work a lot or do you feel as if you have that spacious five hours doing yeah. nothing? I think what COVID passed, um, I've been so creative, creative and I've been working in my book, in my painting, in everything, singing a lot. And then when I go out of the country, just Miami and then Madrid and now here, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. So... I just noticed, like, when you tell me we're going to spend time talking about creativity, I said, like, mm, I mean, I need my time. Like, I need one hour, two hours to just do my journal, do my creative things. It's, like, so important in some point. I don't know. Got it. I'm working a lot. And it's not only working. Like, if you travel all time, you don't have a place. You don't <laughs> have a time. You don't have, like... And it's so difficult. I've been a nomad <laughs> for six years. I definitely know. I, I've been doing that for hard. four years and it's so uh, difficult to find a place to just go deeper and that, like just yeah. take time for you. Yeah, I'm realizing I'm at the end of the rope for me. I, I, I'm at the, I just can't do it anymore. I'm actually at the end and I just need uh, when to find you, a spot. When you tell that, it's like, I don't know, I think you're going to continues to do that like for two years <laughs> whoa please don't cast that so cancel delete no i'm i'm gonna uh my goal is to find a home by the end of the year and be able to to really settle i don't know where it is in the world it could be in europe it could be in the u.s i'm not sure um so i want to ask you then about your creative process yeah yeah i would love to understand because you do all these creative things is there a consistent way that you keep your creativity and your creative energy alive in you? you get, this is the journal. You no, wanted to bring the journal. This is Tell my me. first um, is my journal. Own. That was like eight years ago. I started my first journal. And this is so special for me because that was like the first uh, wide file. You, mm. you talk about that in, in English, like the La Hoja en Blanco. Oh, the white file? Yes. Blank like page? the first, yeah. The first time you go through that fa uh, page and it's like white and you need to just write something. The white you know? file. Interesting. Yeah. So we say the blank page. Yeah. The or blank, a blank canvas. It's it's so difficult because you don't know how to do that. The people told me, okay, you talk about journaling, but I don't know how I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Like how I need to start that. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first text in my journaling was like a tech talk. I was listening to tech talk and I just write all the tech talk. Like one hour, I just do the writing. Da, da, da. And then. Did you write it in Spanish? Did you translate? Or was it in Spanish? That TED was talk? in Spanish, of Got course. It. And Got I it. just. I didn't know people named, were named Ted in Spain. Yeah, Ted. <laughs> <Just> tech talk. 
<laughs> but well, I was just writing one hour and then I said, okay, I love to write. And then I start all the days since eight years. Wow. Every day you write. Yes. I love that. And for me, that was a big open door for creativity, for just feel better. I... I'm yeah. huge on journaling, so I love that that's a big part of your creative process. So do, when you journal, does that then lead you to want to, like you're journaling and then you want to write a poem or you want to paint or you want to sing or like is the journaling the starting point or will you go the other direction? Sometimes will you just start painting and then you'll want to journal? How does it fit in? Sometimes I listen to one song and then I said, okay, I need to write. Like for me now, after eight years, that was like, okay, I need to write. It's like, I need that. It's put my energy on the paper. It's not the same like going to the computer. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the action and the paper and the pen, like just doing the things. You, you want to know? know why? You want to know some fun, interesting fact? Um, so interesting fact. Interesting fact. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. So the um, it depends on how you grew up learning. So. Uh, children who grew up in, well, we were learning while actually writing on physical paper with a pencil or a pen, that act was when we were sort of developing the skill of of learning. Mm -hmm. And so somatically, our body is used to this action and accessing certain parts of our brain. But for kids that are growing up now, where they're on computers and screens and text messages so much more there's a different way that their brains are learn are actually learning somatically with their bodies yeah. and so they wouldn't have the same response to writing with their hand when they get older as we do and so it's just a that's a really interesting thing that i learned which is why i i, I travel with journals and i always write and people go why don't you have you know like a kindle or like one of these electronic things i say it's not the same i, I need have the paper. a lot of that because i've been doing eight years mm -hmm. that thing so i have like 10 and i just move like Ma you Madrid. bring all 10 of them with you wait wait i just move madrid miami pa, 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 now here and i take all my journals in one suitcase and i take that with me a and carry on? Then, yes, it's a carry on. on. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want them to lose it, right? No, but yeah, exactly. I was uh, in the airplane and they told me, like, I need your bag. And, like, your suitcase is not able to come with you. And I said, like, <laughs> no, I, I cannot travel. Like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. And she told me, like, no, you need to give me your suitcase. Okay. And I was crying all the airplane, like, mom, I think I'm going to lose all of my journalings. I have a lot of stories there. Like, I can know. <laughs> I, I agree. I have a, you want to know what's funny is it's not here. It's in Boulder. I, I flew in here from Boulder, um, but I'm working on a book and I need all of my journals. So I've been keeping a journal since 2007, uh, which is what are we at? What, what year are we at? 2024. So that's 17, <laughs> so 17 years, 17 years. This is why I need a home. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't even, yeah, I'm time traveling yeah, now, yeah. but 17 years of keeping journals. And Whoa. so there's, 30 some like I have like 30 something journals or, or whatever and um they're in a box that I have shipped and have brought with me um and I've gone through and I've reread all of them since since 2007 wow. and it's wild because what I learned was I'm writing about the same shit all the time yeah same <gasps> same thing of of you know relationships yeah. and Business, what am I doing with my life? Where do I want to focus my attention? But like, I think everyone write about that. It's life, like love, power, and dreams, you know? Oh, see, I thought sex. Sex, love, and power. <laughs> yes, those are the three. Yeah. <laughs> those okay. are the three. Sex, love, and power. Dreams, okay. like, I guess. So. Um, yeah, but I've been working like with all that uh, journaling and just trying to put in my social media uh, all that message that you can create your reality because my reality changed a lot. Like if I saw my first uh, journal and now the last one, it's like, okay, I just changed a lot not only me, my reality. So for me, right, it's kind of became true, some goal. And that first book, it's so important for me because everything that I write happened then. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, work with Disney, have a character, like travel around the world, like everything is in that book. So for me, that's the most creativity and power book it's in my life. It's wild that that happened. So I found... Um, my mom keeps a lot of my schoolwork from when I was a kid 
And so I went through it one time and there was this exercise. Maybe I was second grade, so like seven years old. And it said, when I grow up, I want to, and then you just fill in this paragraph. And I said, I want to become a millionaire, buy my parents a house, start a charity for homeless people. And, um, with eight years old, yeah, I was like seven years old. Wow. And, uh, the last one was become a professional NBA player, basketball player. And so <laughs> what's funny is I found that a couple years ago. And at that point I had become a millionaire. I'd bought my parents a house. I had started a nonprofit, but it was for kids, um, called surrendered artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I didn't become a professional NBA player. I don't know if you know that I didn't. Um, but it's never too late, you know, maybe if I just write no, it in but my journal it's enough. so powerful because you can just realize what you write and it's not like the same thing, but it's in a different way, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. And, and this is such a common story. So many people say, I wrote this when I was a kid or I wrote this when I was younger and then it came true and I found it. That's a very but common thing. But what is the power of journaling is like, if you don't write that and if you, you don't have the material like in your hands, then when the past go, like you never can, you never be able to go back and just so that, you know, like mm -hmm. just see you write that, that goal and now you have that goals. Mm -hmm. Like I have a very powerful uh, journaling key. It's like a future me, it's an app. And I all time write myself a letter for the future. So maybe in six months, I just received that uh, email. And it's so powerful because I can know how I feel and how I just was living my life. Mm -hmm. And then after six months, I everything changed. So you have an app that will send you a letter that you write to yourself in a certain amount of time later. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing as if you tried to use the post office in Spain. Yeah. <laughs> it just takes you six months to get your stuff yeah. later. <laughs> but it's so powerful because you can be able to know you have a power to create your reality. Just so what you did you write? That. What did you write to yourself six months ago? What's your, that's the letter? I want to just... live in LA. I want to have my house. I want to look the Hollywood sign through my house wow. and everything happened. Really? So for me, journaling, it's a very powerful uh, tool to create your reality. Okay. So then now let's get into the actual acting. I want to talk about that. So with, with creativity, when it comes to a character that you're going to play, um, for me, acting was my, this was before I was ever spiritually awake or had any <laughs> of this, right? When I got into acting, I didn't realize how much of acting was personal development and like personal growth that I was experiencing as I was training as an actor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious for you, what is it that you love about acting and how do you approach it create as a creative process for yourself? I think you have different kind of methods, met how you say methods? methods, methods to go through act through acting. For me, it's very interesting just play that character and just being that character for a while. Just I give my body, um, and I love the way that I can be whatever I want. Like I can be different person in my body. For me, this is the more the most like cre creativity way uh, to express myself, and I think I was learning a lot about me in all that workshops, in all that classes, like through a lot of all my life. It's all about me. Like every character, I just take everything for me. Mm. Every char character I said like came through my life to give me some gift. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when I was fifteen, I was so shame. And the character that I play, that was like, um, you know, the popular. Cool kid. Cool, yeah. Like the most popular in the school. <laughs> and so secure and so like powerful. And she gave me all my power in that teenager age. Do you use that? So um, Beyonce is famous for using Sasha Fierce as an alter ego. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with, no, with an alter that? ego. So alter ego is basically a character that you use. So Beyonce mm -hmm. has Sasha Fierce, which is her character when she gets on stage. And Kobe Bryant, the basketball player, had the Black Mamba, which was what embodied for him being a killer on the court. And so um, character work, 
using an alter ego like Clark Kent and Superman is uh, very powerful and something that I've been thinking recently that I want to start doing for myself. As it, And so um, was the cool character that you played for that role, was that, were you not cool in school? You seem like you would have been cool in school and you were no. acting since you were eight. and you're all the, no, no, I was the most like nerd in the side in the school. Like I had only like five or four, three <laughs> friends. It went from five to four <laughs> to three. No, I You was, were cut, whoever the two of you were, you're out. Yeah, yeah, I was so out. I was no popular, but I was working in the same time, you know. I, I just been in the school and then working, so... That was a we nowhere. What is the the world like? That was an interesting teenager age. But you you were able to play the cool girl. Yeah. So I always thought, and I think it's for that I love a lot like acting yeah. because even if I felt so bad in the school and I was so like, how you say the the, the lady who was in the back like they. They just do bullying with me. Like there was like you were bullied. Yeah, that really? was so bad. The school was so bad. So for me, the acting job that was like they give me life. They give me okay. I'm the cool. You know, I'm the cool. I'm the school. And in you that just plane. pretend that you were cool because, or did you feel? Because the reason why I'm asking is because so I was somewhat the opposite in high school. So I was the cool kid in high school. I won homecoming king, yeah. like prom king, <laughs> and um, but I felt not so cool. I felt very insecure. And I, when I moved out to LA to pursue an acting career, I thought of myself as sort of the nerdy guy next door, like, mm. the, like nerdy, cute kid next door, but not cool leading man at all. And so as a result of that, I didn't, I couldn't actually play those characters because I didn't see myself in that way. And I, I really struggled to to find, that, to that, find place. that place in myself. And so I, it's interesting for me to hear you at such a young age, not feeling like the cool kid getting bullied in school, but then being able to play the cool, pretty that, girl. But so, that was the most interesting thing because I just feel great. And I just pretend like I play. Like when you are an actor so young, I think the most, it's like you never forget playing. You mm. just play. You go to the set and play. And then, okay, I just start my school uh, of acting. And then I've been doing, like, workshops. And then I've been doing, like, more things, you know, more kind of <laughs> path to do yeah. acting. Um, but I think you need, like an actor, you need to take your own path. So then do you still, do you do that in your regular life? Do you like when you're getting ready to go out on the red carpet do you step into this cool girl <laughs> character and then you just like this is who i am now and you play yes really yes that's so interesting cuz i'm yeah, i feel because I'm the like opposite. in some point like yeah, sometimes i i don't like my outfit for example or i i feel so uncomfortable with the dress or something like i feel okay i need to go and like all the people is here, like the makeup artists, the all the people. So I need to go. I don't have any choice. So yeah. I act sometimes. <laughs> That's so interesting. For me, I found I go almost the opposite in the sense of I like to try and be so authentically me all the time. I mean, you met me at Mind Valley, right? I'm yeah. pretty much the same whether we're grabbing lunch or here on the podcast or I'm on stage or whatever. I find I feel as if I'm pretty much the same. Maybe there's yeah. certain parts of my personality that come like when I'm on stage, you have to be a little bit bigger, but um, and in the videos different. I think we choose every time you, we choose one character to show off. Mm. I mean, if I saw I think if I saw your Instagram, I can take a character like it's not all you. Mm -hmm. You think it's all you in your social media? All I, your parts? I th well, the darkness, it, it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. To, it's hard. It's, it's hard a social to, media. Yeah, it's just it's a, a little video. snapshot. But I do think that if you met me in person, anywhere, anytime, um, yeah, maybe I'll be in a bad mood or a good mood or whatever. But I don't. That's I think. I'm, uh, what I'm taking away from this is the idea that maybe I should just play more as characters and not see it. I think for me, I, I always felt it would be inauthentic. And 
I grew up thinking there was something wrong with me. I just thought that there was something off and I was just not a good person and all of these things, right? And so I think my healing journey for myself spiritually Mm -hmm. and personally has required me to get to a point where I'm really proud of who I am, Mm -hmm. just all of me. And so the idea of playing sort of like a character yeah. a little bit in my life, I, I think there's a way for me to That to bring was the that same in. for me before I moved to Madrid. I was so like, something wrong is with me. Like, I cannot be like that. Something happened. But then when I moved to Madrid, uh, anyone know me. So maybe I play and I change my personality. I, I say like, okay, I don't have my family. I don't have my friends. Anyone know me here. I'm going to call myself Tina. <laughs> and I've been Tina, Agustina, Tina, like the people that in the United States, they cannot say Agustina. They say August or Agustina or it's Agustina. So I said, okay, Tina is better. Wait, hold on. You just said it three different ways. I have no, and they all sounded the same. <laughs> Agustina. Is that My right? name is Agustina, Agustina. But the people here told me August or Agustina. They sound the same to me. <laughs> I can't tell the difference. Okay, I'm sorry. So the difference is you can Agustina. tell me Tina. Tina, it's okay. So I said, in Madrid, I'm Tina. So I am starting to play. I don't know if play, but it's not, how you say it? No authentic. Inauthentic. Inauthentic. It's like another character in myself. Mm -hmm. It's Tina. I can be social. I need to go out because I need to know people. I need to go to the red carpet because it's my shop too. I need to just grow my business, my, my, just Agustina Palma, like my name. So I think I changed my personality only because like, I don't had that patterns, like my family, my friends, the people who knows you and sometimes like judge you or give them, um, one advice because they love you. But sometimes that advice is like, okay, maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe I've been like that and now I cannot change. So for me, Madrid was, okay, I can be wherever I want. Like Mm. I can be Tina if I want. So do you find that I I basically can't talk about anything without bringing it back to love and romance and relationships? How does that affect how you show up in relationship? Do you actually have to think? <laughs> Can I about drink water, please? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, how do you think? How do you? Does it affect? Is that the same in relationships? Like, when you start dating, do you think which character am I? Which version of myself do I bring now? Does that weave in? That so, sounds so weird, but I think yes. I love to play. Huh. Um, it's not being inauthentic. Like, I mean, I was, for example, I was dating like people from Spain or London or LA and the people, it's so different. If you go out with a man like from Spain, they have like one kind of go, go through the path, you know? Which is what? Yeah. What's that like? I don't know, like the culture, like Spanish culture is one and the United States culture is another Yeah, I just want to understand the difference between Spanish men and American men. Um, I don't don't know, Adam. (laughs) (laughs) She doesn't want to say. Uh, But well, that was so different. And I just started to to play, like to talk in English uh, Mm -hmm. one year ago. And when I go in a day when I met like in London, I need to pretend I speak English. So... Probably I speak better, better English, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm being like in communication with someone who talk in English. Mm. And in United States, it's the same. Like, it's like no change in my personality, but just be able to play another role, I think. Yeah. I think for me, that was so powerful. Just go to Tallinn. Anyone uh, know me in Man Ballet? And I just pretend, okay, I can speak English. Mm -hmm. I'm Tina and I'm speaking English. So my mind was, okay, you can do it. You just need to try. You've been working a lot in your English. You take classes, but you never talk. So now is the time. Mm -hmm. You can do it. And that was my brain to tell me like, I can do it. How do you feel now? Because we met almost exactly a year ago. Yeah. And you'd only been speaking English for like a month or two. I, my first time speaking English was like Man Ballet Berlin, the workshop. I didn't know English. I was like, the workshop was all in English. And I said like, okay, I, I don't understand nothing, but 
maybe. And so how does it feel now to have a conversation like us talking a year later? Does it feel <clears throat> way more natural? Do you feel as if your character has changed? I think I'm after one year, I'm another Agustina. Huh. I think yeah. all my reality just changed because I started to talk in English. I have my 60% of friends, they speak English. Mm -hmm. So that's changed your reality because you have another type of um, communications and different talks, different Got relationships, it. everything changed. So now I think I feel comfortable, but of course I... I need to take my classes too. Just right. Well, what I appreciate speak in present, future, and past. <laughs> <laughs> what I appreciate about you is that you you the way that you manifest it by writing it down in your journal. You um, play the character as if, right? As if the version of you that you want to live into. I think that's really beautiful. And For example, when you told me we're gonna do a podcast, like you can came, uh, I said like I don't speak English, Alan. Like. <laughs> what I, I need to write first then memorize like i need to prepare my thing and then i said like no okay i can do it like mm -hmm. we're gonna play and if not what happened you told me like you, you just speak like so bad we don't we can do that like it's okay yeah you play. Said, we'll just cut it yeah we'll just cut it and ultimately everyone if you're listening to this can you dm augustina and <laughs> augustina I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Um, and <laughs> Tina. and, Tina, and uh, just let her know how good her English is. Cause I think you just need to hear your English is great. I, I really, okay. really think it's amazing. And so um, I want to shift a little bit into the business side of things. Uh, I'm really big with my new program, the artistic entrepreneur. I'm just big on people taking, not shunning one side or the other. Cause when I was an actor, I just wanted nothing to do with the business. I just wanted to be the artist yeah, and I've and learned, I've learned that that just, that's just not the way. Cause you no. give away so much power. How do you blend your inner artist and your inner entrepreneur inside of yourself? How is it, do you relate to the business side of what you do? That was another thing that I learned in my Bali. I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I was talking about like business with women's and that was like, wow, my family, they never talk like the women's that never talk about like business. Um, bills like how i need to pay like i go to madrid and i said okay i need to pay my my invoice like my my things like how i need to do that so for me that was an open mind that i said like okay i'm my own business my name is my enterprise and how say that enterprise enterprise mm -hmm. so it's not only just act and wait for your opportunity i need to create my my own path I need to, maybe I have eight journalists, maybe I have some story and now I'm doing my short and now I'm writing like a TV show with my mom, like she's working in Miami with actors and everything. So it's not only um, wait for that or do that creativity thing for hobby, because sometimes like the people told you like, if you don't do that creativity things, it's just for hobby. And no, you can do money with that <laughs> yeah so do you have people that help you with that do you personally take that on and you say okay i am the ceo of my name my enterprise and i get to decide my goals how i go about it how much help do you have mm. i'm starting alone alone okay i'm the ceo of yeah. my company um but of course i know when you have a team you can go through that more not quickly, more like further, further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm taking care of my outfits, of, of my just writing, of my creativity side, of my business side, of my building, like, like everything. And yeah, I think a team, it's very important. And now this year I have my team and I'm so proud for that. And I think I feel more calm and I feel, okay, I can have my ho home now and just be quiet for a while and then travel like, more stability in that kind of Got sense. it. Calma. Calma. Augustina. <laughs> Calma. Calma. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a big thing. Finding the right team that can support you and believe in you is everything. Because sometimes, uh, especially in this journey, both as an entrepreneur and an artist, it it can feel so hard. And lonely. There are so, mo there are so many moments. I don't and think lonely. enough people, maybe that's why so many people quit. Um, because once you start the path of entrepreneurship and artistry, 
it can be very lonely. And oftentimes you're building a dream that you feel or you see or you believe in that no one else believes in and no, no one else can see. You are the only, only one that you. can see it. And I remember when I was an actor and I was just starting trying to get even an agent and a manager and how big of a deal that was when I finally got an agent that I, I liked because it felt it's not even what they were going to do. It's just having someone that basically said, I believe in you. Yeah. It's such a big deal. The other day I received a message in, on Instagram and they told me that I want your manager. You have a very good like path. I need your manager. And I said like, okay, I work with my manager, but this thing is for me. This thing is for my team. Like you need to find, obviously if you have your team, your manager, your everything, like you need to do the things by yourself. Mm -hmm. Because the people sometimes tell me like, okay, I'm waiting for my manager. I'm waiting for my agency. I'm waiting for, maybe it's not coming. Like mm -hmm. if you don't go for it, maybe it's, they don't want to call you. Mm -hmm. It's just create your... Where did you get that mindset from? Because that's, I don't, one, I don't meet a lot of Latin women, especially that have that, like that type of mindset. And, um, I'm curious in many ways, that feels like an American mindset. <laughs> and so I'm just curious where you get that from. Character. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a character. That's yeah. Tina, the businesswoman. Yeah. Um, no, I think when I go out of my country, I understand like I need to have more tools like to live my life in the world because mm -hmm. my country is so far away of the world right now. Um, the The culture and the things and everything is so different. So if I pretend to act like I'm an Argentinian in that big world, it's difficult. Mm. So I just think I changed when I moved to Madrid and now here. United States is very complicated to be inside, like with business, with being a wi woman, woman, like just, yeah, you need to take that tools. If not, it's difficult. So then for anyone who's just starting out, Hmm. Anyone who's just starting out, run away. <laughs> <laughs> someone who's just starting out and they have a dream of whether it's their own business, whether that, and they're an artist or a creative, um, what would be the piece of advice that you, you give to them, um, at the starting point where they're really scared and they've had this dream, but they haven't really gone all in on it. Mm. First of all, I think working yourself know yourself very well just to be sure you you have that power to create your reality like you don't need like of course it's good to have your family your friends your, but sometimes they just give you some top some yeah i think you need to surface go surface level yeah i need you need to know your power just to go up to that level mm. Then uh, find your team, find like a good team, not only like manager or agency, like your coach, your mentor, your friend. You need to take coffee with a friend like who inspire you. I love to just take coffee with people who inspire myself, myself just told me about like, I don't know. I have a friend who work in geography and it's like, wow, it's so different. It's so deep. Like, <laughs> what are you doing all, the, all day? And she told me, like, we just um, work with the metals and the, how do you say that? Like, the materials and the tabla periodica. How do you say tabla periodica? Uh, periodic table. Yeah. I said, wow, can you show me that? Mm -hmm. Just be inspired with people who do, like, nothing the same. Mm -hmm. And then learn English. <laughs> <laughs> learn English. So, um all right, so I'm going to ask you a series of just five quick questions here because, um, uh, as I've mentioned, the Artistic Entrepreneur Program, there's actually five modules which I think are really important for how we move through building the, the actual structure for our dreams. And uh, I would like to go through each of the modules with you and have you answer it for in your own life, okay? Oh. So module one, right, is about identifying your core conflict mm -hmm. and aligning with who you 
need to be, which you've talked about with your characters, by removing the obstacles in the way. And so, for example, a core conflict that I've had in my life is between my inner artist that wants to be free to just express with no rules to my inner entrepreneur that wants to have a purpose and make impact and make money and grow something. And those have been in conflict at times for me. So it was a mm. core conflict. Um, I'm curious if you in your life have come up consistently against a core conflict inside of yourself on this journey. Wow. <laughs> um, core conflict. Yeah, I think just my creativity side, that actress who just wants to work in Hollywood, in English, just have the Marvel movie, just go in. And that kind of sense that, okay, I can create my reality. Maybe it's not that. Maybe this is my ego. Maybe this is a bit like, okay, that's going to happen. But what is the, just try to mix my spiritual side to my ego side. I mm. think that's a core conflict. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so then the second module is about um, creating one, a 100% certainty offer. So this is basically the thing that I know with 100% certainty that the right person, the right opportunity, whatever, I will, I will explode. I will change that person's life. I will be able to crush it, right? And so for you, what do you feel is your 100% certainty offer that you bring to the world? Like what is the thing you know with 100% certainty um, every time you walk into a room? Mm. <laughs> um, I think my life is a message. Like I think I can inspire other women in Latin America and in the world, like you can create your reality and change your your path if you know your power. Mm. So you you have a hundred percent certainty that you have proven that you can change your reality. And amazing. I love that. And so then the third module, once you get to that point where you've identified your core conflict, you <laughs> removed it, you have your certainty, then you what we call is craft signature content. So okay. there's um there are certain pieces of content I have out in the world that you see that and you really know me and you, f you can feel me and you feel what I do and who I am and it, and it captures my essence. Mm -hmm. um, do you have things like that in the world, things that you've created or a show that, that you've been on or, or a character that you've played or maybe it's photos or your social media that you feel really captures the essence of you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think all my characters, like what I want to show with the people in my social media, they have the some essence of, of my personality. Like mm. it's not fake. I go through that uh, red carpet or that. It's one of my sites. Mm -hmm. But I have um, a cone in Instagram who, whose name is Club de Estrellas. It's my star club. Mm -hmm. It's her broadcast channel, fam. You can go <laughs> go subscribe. So I think this is my my essence and my kind of um, place, safe place. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the next module, fourth module out of five, only two more to go. <laughs> the fourth module is what I call dating your audience. <laughs> Dating your audience, which is about how do you create authentic relationships with your audience? And as someone who has, it seems like a really authentic relationship with your social media, I, I admire that and what you've built for yourself. Can you share what are some of your tips or your ways that you actually build an authentic relationship with your audience online? I think I've been doing what I really like to do like travel and i show my travels or, or just being myself and talk about life about like club de estrellas about like how you can do like that reality uh being yourself i i just saw a lot of people just pretending to do like things they don't like when you love something just show that mm -hmm. because this is your essence what about if you're going through a tough time do you show anything through what going through a hard time because my audience, a lot of my audience was built also from being very vulnerable and sharing when I was struggling. And so, do you... Yeah, I saw that. I think... <laughs> you saw that. Yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. I think you are so um, kind to show that. Because, of course, we have different times and we have that dark time or the happy time. Or For me, that was one election, you said? 
selection selection like one right i choose to don't show that deep mm -hmm. uh, darkness what's the reason because i like to go through instagram i be i spend a lot of hours in instagram and i love to go through instagram and just i select the thing that i want to see and i want to feel happy because if i need to feel depressed <laughs> or bad um i have my my life and we all have <laughs> problems and uh, this is one i choose that i love that you the way that you said that made me laugh because you said like i want instagram to be the place that i go to feel happy and if i want to feel depressed i have my life <laughs> i mean i don't know we all go through different kind of things in life yeah and for me that was my cho my choose i choose just a few uh, accounts i select my accounts i'm in there uh, you are there yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah i select what i want to see because we have a lot of information in this moment mm -hmm. we have tiktok we have youtube you have and sometimes a lot of information it's nothing mm -hmm. it's you're totally lost and i go to bed like okay i was looking this men crying and this this woman so happy in the luxury dubai like what i feel so lost so i choose what i want to got it you curate and i it choose so it, like yeah. just share when i see in my instagram you you are creating instagram for yourself and for others what you want to be experiencing i think that's but beautiful. sometimes people told me like you only show the best moment of your, your life mm -hmm. like it, this is fake this is not seriously like what you never felt bad like yeah of course yes Mm -hmm. But maybe I shared that in my podcast or maybe I shared that in my other account. Like I have different social media and I want to share my happy moments. Got it. You have another account. It's a Fensta. Do you know what a Fensta is? It's Club is? The Stretches. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> um, and so last module of, of the program that I take people through is also about building your monetization ecosystem. So it's really about building, and this is your team and your mm. systems and like your funnel and stuff. And uh, we talked about it a little bit in terms of you actually building out a team, but um, as an artist, specifically as, as an actress and, and, yeah. a, and a public figure, um, how intentional are you on the business side of things when you're thinking about, okay, how am I making money? For example, do you, um, can you just take us into a bit of your process about how you think about that? Mm. How I said, like, that was a big problem for me because I didn't receive like the, in the school or in my culture, like we don't talk about money. So for me, go to Madrid and just pay my bill and my, my things that was so weird so i think in that community i um in my ballet i just learned about like be surrounded about women who just work with that and mm -hmm. take the, the the power of the business and the money and just talk about money like that was so weird for me being in a table just weird it's a, it's a bad where it's okay it's weird, a word okay. Okay. yeah it's weird uh, it's like it's was, just strange yeah that was like yeah. jogged for me to be surrounded like a lot of women just talking about money about business about how to move money yeah and for me my advice was just be surrounded about like people who inspire you yeah and just take notes and just i don't know go to through your phone and put the name and then go through youtube and have more information about that i absolutely 100 percent agree i think that for me i went through a period of my life where i realized i didn't have anyone to look to for inspiration in certain areas and that's when i hired my first coach and that's when i started attending workshops and retreats and, and really and i say this all the time which is if you don't have it pay for it pay for it go pay to attend something like mind valley or go to um, a retreat or hire a coach i did all of those things and i think that being in the right circles where people will talk about um it took me a long time to start talking about money and business and again uh, yeah, that's good to say like it's not like one day you don't know about how to do money and then another day you just have a lot of money it's like it's a path you need to feel that you need to I think you need to to believe you can create that business, and mm -hmm. that's take a lot of time. Like just to change your mindset and change your brain to just have abundance, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and it and it takes um, 
being around people where it's normal. When I was living in Miami, I was around people worth hundreds of millions of dollars and they talked about money and business just as if like my friends talk about plant medicine and, and cacao ceremonies. <laughs> like it's just normal for them. And um, I really, it changed my way of thinking so much. And I realized in a lot of my followers, for example, are more in the spiritual side mm. and there's a discomfort around money. And so even yeah. as I'm filling a program, I ask people, hey, where are you at financially and where do you want to go? Tell me your goals so I, I know. And people will, will avoid the conversation or they won't actually answer the question. I'm going, why are you not answering it? It's If you went to a doctor, let's say, and he said, okay, tell me how you're feeling. You don't go, yeah, I'm feeling it. You go, no, I have like this thing yeah. over here, this thing, because it's specific so you can get help. And then when we come into business and money, people think, don't want to just say what it is. I think it, this is the, the another tool to just uh, change your reality. Be surrounded about that conversations. Because sometimes like, for example, if I talk about that with a friend in Argentina who had another, have another work, another reality, another, it's so different so my net my next goal in <laughs> that path is just try to bring some uh women through argentina mm. to miami because we have like um worship like acting worship and all of that and just uh i think it's the best way to just change the reality be in the place have conversation have relationships have like be surrounded about like your next reality 100%. I 100% agree. And I'm so grateful that you uh, faced your fear of English and came here and jumped on the Creative Path podcast Thank with you me. so much for that podcast. Yeah. I mean, that was a challenge for me. To th This morning I was like, okay, I'm going. No, no. I need to say no. No. Okay, yes. And That's I'm so a, you, proud. I'm so proud of you and I'm so <laughs> grateful. And I think this, this has been really valuable. What do you think? It's been valuable. It's been super valuable. Hopefully you have something. Like, yeah, I think it's been incredible. <laughs> uh, and so the um, let people know how they can follow you, find you, uh, get more of you in the world because you have so much to offer. Okay, my account is Palma Agustina in Instagram. <laughs> Agustina. Agustina. <laughs> Palma Agustina. And then I have Club de Estrellas. It's my project just to show the people they can create that reality. And I have... YouTube, TikTok, and all that with Palma Agustina. <laughs> yes, and you'll find the links in the show notes to all of that. Um, Agustina, thank you so much for being here. I re it really means... Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Muchas por todo. gracias por a ti por, por invitarme. Por todo. Gracias, mi amor. Tienes que aprender gracias. español también. Así hicimos sí. un podcast en español. Okay. Y sí. Thank you for that space. And I think it's very important that message. Like, you can create that artistic thing with the business part, like... We need to mix that. Yeah. It's not only art. A hundred percent. And you are helping guide the way. Thank you again for being here. Thank you everybody to following us on the creative path uh, today and going on this journey with us. I encourage you, if you got value from this, to please share it out, share it with a friend. Um, and if you are on this journey, I want to remind you that you can have everything that you want absolutely everything that you want it sounds like you just need a journal you just got to write it down and, journal and start is there the game. write it in spanish and english double your chances yes. <laughs> and i want to remind you that always in all ways you are seen you are heard and you are loved have a beautiful and blessed day wherever you are in the world Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking the time. If you are interested in building a life that you love through the three pillars of relationship, business, and creativity, then I encourage you to continue checking out more of my content, including this video, which I really think that you will like.